The structure of a hypothesis test is as follows. We need a null and alternative hypothesis. The null specifies the parameter we're interested in and a particular value that we think it might take. Alternative um, sort of negates the null hypothesis in some way. Here, a less than, so a one-sided lower tail alternative. Test statistic is based on sample statistics. So in this case, the mean standard deviation and sample size and the value from the null. And that test statistic is specified so that it has a known distribution. In the case of um, either a large sample um, or a small sample where the population is normal, we can use the T distribution within minus one degrees of freedom for this particular test statistic. We can calculate a rejection region and reject if the test statistic exceeds the critical value. So here, um, the fifth percentile, because it's a lower tail test, and we want to reject if the test statistic is further away from zero than that number, or we reject if our p-value is small. OK, so how can we use software to handle that for us? Let me start with Insight. Um, so a statistical package. I'm going to import some data. So I have somewhere in here a CSV file. Here we go. <coughs> uh, OK, so 10 observations. Uh, let me rename the variable. So let's just call it X. Now, if I select that X variable here and get inference, I want to do a one sample t test. Um, so suppose I thought um, the null value, um, I thought the mean less than 42 is an appropriate alternative. So null value 42. And here I'm going to choose my less than one sided alternative hypothesis. Click OK. Um, calculates a confidence interval for me, which I didn't want, but um, there it is. It's also evaluated that test statistic formula. So the sample mean minus um, the null value that I specified of, of 42, divided by standard deviation over root n. Has n minus 1 is 9 degrees of freedom and a p-value of 0.34 or 34%. Uh, because that p-value is large, because this test statistic here is small, um, I don't reject the null hypothesis in this case. In Excel, um, I can do that manually. Uh, so I can calculate the sample mean, I could calculate the sample standard deviation, I can calculate the sample size using the function count, and I can evaluate the test statistic, which is the mean, sample mean, minus the value 42 divided by the standard error. Notice I need another bracket here. S divided by square root of n. So that's my test statistic and you might remember that number from before. I can ask for the fifth percentile of the t distribution. The function t dot inv is the function that gives me percentiles of the t. I want the fifth percentile because I'm interested in that lower tail, and I have n minus one degrees of freedom. So there's the critical value. This test statistic isn't further away from zero than that number, so I wouldn't reject H norm. I could ask for the p value. So using the function t distribution. There's the value I'm interested in. Degrees of freedom, n minus 1. Cumulative, 
is true. And there is the p-value that Insight gave me. Uh, there it was there, 0.343. Okay, so I can do all of that stuff in Excel, but in a fairly manual way. There is a, a trick um, which we can force Excel to actually do a test for us. It doesn't have a built-in hypothesis testing function, but if we load the data analysis add-in, um, one of the options here is a t-test for two samples assuming unequal variances and we can trick that method into giving us a one sample t-test so let's see how variable one range is our um, true sample variable two range by putting zeros in there it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of zero and those those are important the hypothesized mean difference is the value mu naught that I want, so 42. Uh, alpha is 0 0.05. Mm, possibly want 0 0.1 there, but let's let's see what we get. So I click OK, um, and there is the. Let me just blow this up a little bit. There is the test statistic value that we've seen before, and there is our one-tailed p-value. Okay, so using a two-sample test with one variable being uh, a bunch of zeros um, gives us the stuff that we want in Excel, even though it's um, a little bit artificial.